Hey guys, it's Jeff again. I am here with the third part in the Warrior series of devotions. Uh, this devotion, I want to focus on knowing your mission. So, uh, I do have another story for you. Surprise, surprise. Uh, but first, I want to read the scripture, right? So, Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. It says this, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now you guys, I don't know if it's just me, but as I read that, my question is like, Paul, dude, you are in prison, you are in chains, probably being beaten, not fed well, probably don't sleep well. How in the world is it that your only focus is still on your mission for Christ? How do you get to that point? So part of the answer to that question is in the question itself. So let me tell you a little story uh, from the military, okay? So it's been quite a few years and about 50 pounds ago. I know some of you are laughing at that fat joke for me at my expense, but hey, it's all right. So many years ago, 50 pounds ago, uh, I went through a process uh, called SFAS. It's Special Forces Assessment and Selection. And that is uh, the initial phase of um, becoming a Green Beret. So as you can probably imagine, that was not a really fun process to go through. Uh, it was not a vacation place. In fact, when you show up, there is a big sign just glaring at you before you even get off the bus. It's this big sign that says, welcome to a new level of suck. And in fact, they held true to that. Um, I experienced more pain there than probably anywhere else in my military career. So um, part of the fun of this experience is very early on in the training, they give you what, um, what they call the human tick. It's a, it's a rucksack, a backpack, and you never have less than 50 pounds in that thing. And so it's called the human tick because the longer you wear it, it just sucks the life out of you, right? So everything you do is with a 50 pound rucksack on, minimum. And then you add water on, it gets more than that, right? So it's just tough. Uh, it's in the summer, down in North Carolina, the heat is blazing, it's sand everywhere, so it's not easy to walk. Um, we're several weeks in, um, and we, we come to what we uh, love to call Hell Week at that time. Um, so, we had a certain event that we had to do. Now, some events were incredibly difficult. Other events were deliberately made to be impossible because they wanted to see how you would respond when high pressure situation where you absolutely could not accomplish the mission, right? So we've got all this gear, all this weight. We're already tired. We've already done several things throughout the day, just pouring sweat, drenched in sweat. And we come up to um, this problem that they gave us where everyone's carrying their, their equipment and they take duffel bags filled with sand, 250 pounds a piece. They're supposed to represent uh, pilots. And this is supposed to be a crashed air, aircraft, right? So there's metal poles and just a little bit of rope scattered around and then these 250 pound bags. And uh, the problem is, downed aircraft with pilots and your group, this small little team of people, you have to get them out. You have to move them. So you have to figure out how you're going to do that. Um, already we're thinking, man, this is, this is not going to be fun, right? Those are heavy dudes and we're already carrying a lot of, a lot of weight. And then we look at where we have to take them to and it's like 10 miles away. You guys, this is horrible, right? Like who in their right mind would do this? Every one of those guys, at, at this point, every one of those guys was still there for a very specific reason. Their love of the country, and they wanted to serve, number one. But number two, their mission, their focus, 
Their eyes were on the prize at the end. They wanted to earn their green beret. And no matter how much pain they were going through, the pain was not greater than their desire for that green beret. Now, we went out on this mission, and we're carrying this stuff, and the leader of that patrol got us lost, and like time had ended, exercise is over, the cadre make it incredibly easy to quit. I mean, all you have to do is say the word, and poof, just like that, you get rid of all the weight, they give you cake, and like goodies, and you can sit in the air conditioning, and like, it is so enticing to quit. We're lost, we're over time, we're carrying all this weight, and yet not one of us would quit because the focus was on the mission. The mission superseded everything. That's the secret of what Paul has going on here. Paul's focus is on the mission. Doesn't matter if he's being beaten, doesn't matter if he's in chains, doesn't matter if he's in prison. It doesn't matter because he is on mission, a mission given by God. And he's not going to stop until he dies. So check this out. Let's go back and look at this. In verse 18, he says, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. You guys, this is what I've been talking about for a while with listening prayer. How do you pray without ceasing? How do you pray at all times? It's because in listening prayer, there is a constant dialogue where you are talking to and hearing from God. Now, that doesn't have to be this booming voice where you just hear it with your ears. As a matter of fact, it rarely is hearing it with your ears. Learning to hear from God, it, it becomes like a sixth sense. It's almost like a gut feeling, except way clearer and way more uh, moving to you, way more motivating than just a gut feeling, right? But that only happens as we spend more time with him. That voice becomes clearer. That sixth sense becomes clearer. He says, be alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. That kind of means coming to him one time a week. That's not going to cut it. You're not going to hear clearly from God if all you're giving him is an hour a week, two hours a week. No, what he's saying is, this relationship, if you want to hear from God and let God direct you, it's all consuming. It doesn't stop. If you go to work and you're working in the army, it doesn't stop. God's talking to you. He comes with you into the army. As a matter of fact, he's already there, right? If you're a nurse, God's already there. He talks to you in your profession. Verse 19, Paul is then asking for strength in the mission. You guys, that's part of what we need to do. No matter where we go, no matter what we're doing, we're in dialogue with him and he is strengthening, strengthening us. He's saying this while he's in chains, which means we never quit. We never, he doesn't give up on us. He never gives up on us. That's never the problem. The problem is always when we give up on, on him. So you guys, I don't want to belabor this. But what I want to recommend is that you need to get on mission. Right? If you have no mission, you're just treading water. It is so much easier to swim when you're going to a place than to just tread water. You need to get on mission. Ask God for clear guidance, and then start marching, right? Last devotional, I talked about getting trained. This is a part of it. Have people pray with you about the mission. What is your mission? What is your calling? What is your identity? What does God have for you? Once you find that and you get on that, that is how you continue to hear from him and you do not give up. Your life will be different. I promise you, sitting still, being complacent, it will kill you. It's just a matter of time, right? Being on mission is the only way to move forward. 
with that, I just pray a blessing over you guys. Thanks for watching these devos. I hope they were uh, helpful for you. So thanks, guys.